We protect people's time, information, reputation, money, health, and relationships. And we endeavor to make our collaborations, products, and services resilient and safe. So for us, this is at every level of the organization. It's internal, it's external, it's for individuals, teams, and across teams. So we've set up uh, the Miro board. I can find it. Anything you want to add, Stephanie, actually? Um... No, thank you. I just added uh, the picture of modern uh, agile with the principles to the board and also a quick link to uh, a small article uh, which is introducing it quite well. So you could check it out later if you want to. Cool. So the way we thought we would approach this, because we're at different levels of exposure and experience. In fact, maybe you don't even need to know anything about modern agility. All you need to know is you've had good experiences around feeling safe. And so we've set up three flip charts <laughs> uh, with questions. And uh, we'd like to do something kind of, I like to call it a gallery walk, where we take five minutes and you can go at your own speed and your own inspiration and go from question to question grab a post-it and write down your answer. Um, so the first one is really thinking about what's what you feel is the biggest threat to safety internally. So it could be for people, teams, or within the organization and externally. So maybe there are external factors to safety um, that need to be highlighted. So grab a post-it, write down your ideas. Then um, the next one is what ideas uh, do you have to make people awesome? So we see this awesomeness connected to safety and uh, what are things that you're doing in your organization or that you've experienced even personally that you would like to document and share in the, on that post-it, um, that flip chart. And then the last one is, uh, is there something uh, that you think would be a fun experiment uh, that either you would like to try or you could imagine a team trying? So the offer is take a minute to think about all of those, go to whichever flip chart you want to start. And in total, because we have very little time together in any case, we're going to start with five minutes and we're just fill out these post-its in silence. And I'll use the, oh, I can't use the timer. Um, yeah, so, so I have a timer on my phone prepared so I can be the timekeeper, Suzanne. Oh, Florian's, Florian's got it. Awesome. Oh, okay. He's already started it. Thank you. Thank you. So Florian started the timer on the Miro board and um, many of you already have this practice built in. But as you, if you write a post-it and you see someone nearby has written almost the exact same thing, go ahead and pre-cluster. Uh, if you see same ideas, go ahead and pre-cluster them. In any case, we'll just continue in silence. Okay, so I saw a flurry of activity. Super cool. Um, we might 
still be working on some experiments. I suspect that as we talk about um, things that aren't safe and that are making people awesome, we might actually come up with experiments along the way. So um, don't worry if you didn't get to that, that uh, section. Um, so I think we see a lot of things. Um, yeah. Zero tolerance. Get to mention that one. Um, bullying. So I'd be curious. Um, bullying. How does that, uh, if the person who wrote that one would be open to sharing, how does that look in sort of a modern work context or maybe a remote context? If you could um, help people understand what you mean by bullying. Hi, Susanna. <laughs> it's Martin. Um, uh, I, uh, I wrote that. Uh, I saw it may, uh, mainly in previous employers uh, uh, years uh, before today. Um, uh, that uh, what happens is that uh, some uh, typical alpha uh, type uh, manager uh, wants to have his way of uh, things happening in, in a project uh, by uh, just uh, uh, giving every uh, one in the, in the team a very strong lecture on what he wants to, to do and explicitly uh, saying what he doesn't like about uh, somebody's performance and uh, and that uh, uh, pushing very hard uh, uh, and also uh, uh, doing that uh, with other colleagues uh, in presence as well. So uh, just by doing a very intimidating uh, behavior. Yeah, perfect. Because now it also, um, the others who are attaching post-its to that, letting bullies go on bullying, which also means accepting somebody's um, bullying behavior, uh, which means not calling it out, not giving feedback on that. Does anybody see a post-it that they need clarification on? Maybe raise your hand. Is there a post-it that um, you look at that and you go, I don't really understand what that is. I need an example. I see blaming and finger um, pointing yes, I would, would. several times. Anybody to explain that? So you, the finger pointing, do you, uh, okay. Uh, is that, is your question, uh, is that different than blaming? Or is that the same? As I that? guess it's uh, more or less the same. And, uh, but, uh, but, but I'm not, Sure, uh, so I, uh, I'd like to know who uh, put it up. And, uh, and, it's um, like there are several. The, uh, what the view is. Actually, actually, Martin Oliver put up one of the finger pointings and uh, I pulled actually the post-it over from uh, up to the blaming part because I think it's uh, it's a lot of, oh, it was Martin um, doing this uh, stuff here. So it's also part of the shifting of responsibility and finger pointing in a very personal way rather than yeah constructive speaking about the facts uh, non fact yeah. totally non factual and yeah. Yeah. it's like pulling the rug under your shoes and uh, pulling the safety rug essentially yeah and people forgetting that when you point fingers you are also pointing to yourself precisely yes. with three fingers that, that often uh, helps just to point out thank you thank you I wanted to discuss this first one thing. This is about uh, yeah, the, the the excellence part or the the high the high ambition parts. Uh, there, there was a was a, was, a, was a longer longer text written about putting too high ex expectations on people. Uh, uh, however, when you in a in a in an excellence um, uh, yeah type type of job class so like an R and D, uh, I think it's it's difficult to say okay you you you, you can't can't survive there with. Uh, <laughs> below a certain level and I think this, uh, this is this is difficult I think and it's a question whether you can grow or you can't grow to the expected level or to the level of or the, the usual level of your colleagues uh, I find it that difficult to say okay you, you need to be uh, psychologically safe anyhow yeah um, you in the wrong environment right uh, so maybe others uh, also 
have heard about the growth mindset and this um, moving away from coupling excellence and perfection. So it's separating what excellence is, saying um, excellence is continually optimizing and making something better, where perfection is nothing wrong happens and everything is exactly um, as you expected. And um, I think most of us realize we, after it, living through a worldwide pandemic, um, we're looking for predictability, we're looking for safety, uh, but the truth is we, many of us realize now we don't live in a world that we can fully predict and know, and therefore perfection uh, is maybe not the thing that we can reach for. But it's it's a good point to um, to write that. So uh, in in German we say an die eigene Nase fassen, also to um, to look after uh, yourself. What is your mindset? So I think it it really is a point. So we have the uh, the specialist with the academies and and high uh, high level um, um, Ausbildungen. <laughs> And and we have the also the colleagues who who just start with with uh, agile and uh, yeah if if you don't uh, watch out you you have already um, we are the experts and they are just starters so it's a it's a good point um, to to look after that you don't trap in in <laughs> into this uh, fat form <laughs> fat bowel <laughs> yeah right. Anything else? Just a just a question. I um, I see a, um, a sort of a paradox on um, in in this whole um, thing as as I with culture um, in a whole. The more you want it, um, sometimes the less you get it. Especially if uh, you want uh, other people to move, which which is the sort of finger pointing also. So you should uh, say what you want you should uh, this or that and um, a lot of the things um, it, it's it, for me it starts with yourself and and I I, I have uh, some some issues with choosing mindsets like uh, I would like to go to the closet in the morning and choose the growth mindset and then put it on for the day or for life uh, probably but um, I, I struggle with that sometimes so um, the more um, you want uh, the culture to be good and you expect others to do things uh, the less it works so mm, that, that's the that makes it different for me to how to create it or how to prevent it from being safe that, that's the point where i can can really get through yeah great point my um, perception is that, that the, the, the great the greatest factor of limitation might be yourself. <laughs> this is also what I wrote because uh, when you're limiting yourself from the beginning, you can't change anything uh, and you perhaps to overburden others with, with your own ambitions. Just, just a thought. Uh, we had this uh, keynote speaker yesterday and he uh, uh, stressed the point, make small steps. Maybe we should also uh, apply that to ourselves. Uh, if you only make small steps, then you can make improvement. You can't ch change yourself or your behavior or even uh, your uh, sense of, uh, of safety overnight. Uh, it will take a long, long journey of, of, of months and years uh, to, do, to do that. Uh, and uh, even make a change for yourself, make a, just a tiny, small step. Only a step. And that will be a good start. And, and be confident and, and, and happy with yourself if you achieve that. Yeah, these are great, uh, great comments and insights. Um, I'm curious, uh, something that's happening in my organization, we're talking a lot about accountability and responsibility and everything you, you guys have just touched on. Um, we were saying, well, there have to be consequences. Um, there, there has to be when something, someone doesn't do what they say they're gonna do, there, something has to happen. And uh, we asked everybody to define accountability, like holding each other accountable. And the realization that most people came to when they had to think about what's accountability, they said, oh, well, it's 
I do, you know, people, ah, I do what I say I'm going to do. So I, it starts with me. And uh, when I'm looking at the safety piece, it's the same, it's again, the same pattern. Um, if we could, I, I know our time is really short, so I'm gonna just move over to um, making people awesome. So if we take that idea of, it starts with yourself. Um, I also very much liked what Gitta said about um, taking care of other people. What are um, some of the things that we have here in this Make People Awesome? I think it's almost a, a philosophical question because uh, in, in our society, we grow up um, with uh, we are the best, uh, you you are the best and uh, you have every right. So we saw that, um, sorry, we saw that during Corona that, that our society is um, has done um, not better than, than other societies. That is my feeling. and. Um, maybe uh, it's a good point to learn that we as an in individual step back a little bit and give the the other person a, a, a bit more room so um, to to respect other people to respect um, their opinions or their their development so um, that's a point I'm, I'm philosophing in at the moment thank you it, it is philosophical, uh, Babette. Uh, I, I think uh, you're, you're right. Uh, uh, but it's uh, philosophical to the practical point is, yes, we have to acknowledge each other's existence and uh, um, uh, being aware that we look at each other, see each other, uh, uh, are aware of each other's presence in what we are doing and, uh, and that we are first human yeah. in connecting to each other and uh, only when we do that then we can really achieve something uh, together because we are aware of each other's existence uh, with that uh, what, what, what can mean all that that existence and that's uh, really the philosophical part of it but uh, uh, it's very practical in the that I am looking at you now and you are looking at me and that we know that we want to achieve something yeah. Yeah. and that's true for everyone yeah, Margin, you just yeah, you just inspired me. Um, if if I could ask you guys, um, would you be open to a thirty second exercise that you could use in your meetings that actually help create presence and uh, get everybody in the room, even though they're remote? Something that I recently was reminded of and tried, and it worked really well. So everybody that can turn on your camera. And I want you to take a moment to look at everyone you see in front of you. Look at the screen and try to make eye contact. And if you make eye contact, give them a little smile. Because that's what you would do in a room of full of people. You would be looking around and seeing them and acknowledging them and saying, I see you, you're here with me. Yeah. Even though it's a virtual space. Thank you. That was the experiment. <laughs> this is something I've done at the beginning of retros, uh, something I've done at all company meetings at the very beginning, just to welcome everybody into the space. And uh, it helps people be truly present and feel like I am in this with everyone here. Mm -hmm. What 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 I thought was really great yesterday, um, Melanie was a, uh, the small breakout sessions with three or four people. Um, of course, it was not much time, but you really um, talk to another and and hear some of the personal things. So um, I really thought that was. Uh, worth it because then now I know colleagues from from Russia from Slo Slovakia from all over and I know a bit of their of their personal um, 
like what what they are working at the moment and what feelings they have. So uh, that that was really a, a a great try in in the direction you just made with the thirty seconds. Cool. So I'm also really mindful of the time, and um, I think we've got about a minute left. So if you've been inspired, something very concrete, an experiment that you were willing to post on the board to inspire others, maybe the more concrete you can make it, uh, the better. And then we can all take this away and we can co-inspire each other to try things, whether it's asking everybody to take 30 seconds, turn on their camera and make eye contact. And I don't know if this has any impact. Um, I can just say the, I know in Germany, uh, I'm not sure what other parts of Europe, um, but the word fuck up has become a very common, but in the English language, it's a very aggressive, very um, anger filled word. So as a native English speaker, I'm okay with using it. I use it in private. I use it in my car when I'm yelling at other people who can't <laughs> hear me. But um, I work in a company now that's very international and we've chosen to replace that the word fuck up with flops and fiascos. So <laughs> these are things that didn't work or that were a disaster, but there's no anger or aggression behind it. Mm -hmm. So just a request to be mindful of the words that you use because that will create a lot of safety as well. Mm -hmm. Good body, body leasing is another word. The word body leasing. Body leasing. Yeah, because the first when I first heard the word body leasing, I told my boss that I'm not willing to to <laughs> to lease my body, but uh, surely my brain, but not my body. Body <laughs> shopping. What does it mean? Never... Body yeah. shopping. I know the word body shopping. Yeah. <laughs> no, I need an explanation for that one. Actually, I, I never. I know. I never. No, I never. It's quite it's common here that. Uh, yeah, oh. yeah. So That's if, a great if, way you hire, if you hire a consultant, then it's, it's used here in uh, telecom uh, body leasing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To hire someone from external. But, it, but it's not a real, uh, is it a, a um, English expression, Susan? But what would you say? Or That's you, what I would you... ask for, from Susan. <laughs> Susan, yes. can, can, you, can you explain <laughs> what, what's the English uh, expression there yes. used? No idea what that is or what it means. I've never heard of it. Okay. I'm learning Good something. To know. <laughs> I'm going to go Google uh, it. Temporary person. It's mm -hmm. just another word for hiring a temporary person. I think it's uh, very problematic, to be honest. I don't think it's very... I, I think it's called body shopping in in uh, in UK or... Oh, in, even in worse. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so I just want to bring it back. I want to bring it back. Bring it back. Bring back the, uh, the session just to close it. Um, because I know then we'll be moving on to uh, going back to the wider session. Uh, Stephanie, who is my colleague at Genie, thank you for suggesting the session, for pitching it and posting it. And thank you everyone for coming. This shows that you care and you wanna make it. And as we, as we know, but maybe we need the reminder Safety starts with us. Thank you. Thank you. So thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, everyone. And if you want to give us some feedback, there is an extra space for that uh, in the bottom of the yeah.